Our conversation with the second of three presidential candidates, Hillary Clinton. Notably, Senator Barack Obama was not here in Memphis today. He was campaigning instead in the Midwest, in Indiana, where we, where he spoke of Dr. King, the civil rights mission that is still unfinished, according to Senator Obama. This afternoon, from Fort Wayne, Indiana, the senator took time to speak with us. A lot of people in the crowd uh, uh, assume you are here or will be here, yet you're not. Why is that? Well, you know, obviously, we all, I think, across the country are marking uh, the tragic death and the extraordinary life of Dr. King. Uh, I thought that I could best deliver that message uh, here in Indiana and later in North Dakota. I also had the opportunity to talk to Dr. King's family this morning, and I think they're aware of how important uh, I I uh, believe the legacy of Dr. King is. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for him. He was a 39-year-old man when he died on the balcony behind us. He's now been dead longer than he was on Earth. What of his message back then in 1968 uh, continues today unchanged? Well, obviously, you know, race is still an important factor in our society. Uh, there is still discrimination. There are still barriers to opportunity. But... I think what's important to note is that Dr. King went down uh, to Memphis as part of the poor people's movement. Uh, and he recognized the link between economic justice and racial justice. On the economic front, we just found out uh, that last month we lost 80,000 jobs, uh, over 200,000 so far this year. And so often uh, that is disproportionately impacting African Americans and Latinos. Having an agenda that ensures economic justice, that everybody can get paid a decent wage uh, and find a job, uh, that part of Dr. King's dream has not yet been achieved and I think has to be one of the challenges of America uh, in the coming decade. Senator, one of Dr. King's lesser publicized quotes came from 1967, quote, I'm sorry to have to say that the vast majority of white Americans are racist either consciously or unconsciously. What do you make of that quote in 2008? Well, I think that there has been enormous progress over the last 40 years, and you see it most with the younger generation. Uh, you know, I think the attitudes uh, are light years away from where they were in 68, but there's no doubt that we still have unconscious prejudices, not just white, but also black and Hispanic and Asian. I think we all have biases and fears and concerns of people who don't look like us on the surface. And that's why it's so important that we have a leadership that is not trying to exploit those biases, but rather trying to overcome them. Senator Obama, thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much. That conversation via satellite from Fort Wayne earlier today. We'll return to this anniversary and this topic later in the broadcast. Meantime, the weather has done nothing, as you may have noticed, to brighten this somber day here. It's been raining here in Memphis for two days straight, and now the temperatures here tonight have turned awfully cold. There is violent weather along a huge front that straddles the Mississippi River tonight. Severe thunderstorms with embedded tornadoes run along the front. All of it is moving east, some of it north. The rain tonight extends as far north as New England. Aside from this anniversary, we are back now from the National Civil Rights Museum. It's an amazing place. Visitors here are so often moved to tears, the way people so often are at the Holocaust Museum in Washington, the battlefield at Gettysburg, the beaches of Normandy. And it's largely because this museum is attached to the Lorraine Motel. Our friend, the Atlanta-based correspondent Ron Mott, is here with such an interesting story tonight about how a company is using this museum and what it does to people to affect its own people. Ron. Yeah, hi, Brian. It's great to be with you tonight. This really started as an experiment by this company to try to personalize a corporate commitment to inclusion, and that has turned into a reliable force for change, not only to lives, but also the bottom line. Again, I'd like you to take some time, walk a mile in the shoes of those individuals. Like many companies, Best Buy what conducts diversity do? training at a hotel. Or what's one event that strikes you as you're going through? More precisely, a motel, the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, now the National Civil Rights Museum, where Martin Luther King Jr. was gunned down 40 years ago. It's a little speechless right now, I really am. 
I have this photograph in my room. Best Buy calls this an immersion. I'm sorry, but we don't serve colored people in here. Dipping employees back in time. It's Miss Parks, Miss Rosa Parks. She won't get up. To keep the company moving forward. Our leaders get a new idea of who they want to be as a person. What kind of legacy do they want to leave? And Best Buy says such personal commitment to diversity has strengthened its bottom line. Some corporations give short shrift to it. Some give lip service to it. Best Buy makes it real. They pay. They invest. I wasn't bringing my whole self to work. I was actually coming invisible in the background. And I think since that experience, I've come fully out as myself. To realize that children were involved in in all of this chaos. It is emotional. It's very emotional. Um, you know, it's just walking through uh, history. A tough walk some 1,300 employees have taken over the past four years. We never put a person in a position to feel put upon. We, we put them in a position to be honest with themselves. And Best Buy says that honesty has made the company better, fostering a more family-like environment. And Brian, by year's end, some 800 more managers from Best Buy will walk through this experience. As everyone should. Ron, glad you were here to witness this with us today. Ron Mott here with us in Memphis. Back here in Memphis tonight, room 306 and the balcony at the motel, Dr. King's motel room. They're all frozen in time, exactly the way they were when the rifle shot rang out, ending his life. It's eerie, it's powerful, it's a sad time capsule from this night 40 years ago. Earlier today, we toured the balcony and looked at the room with the Reverend Al Sharpton, who organized much of today's remembrance. This balcony held for a long time until it was washed away a national stain. This, this place gives off an electric charge. What does it mean to you to be standing out here? It is an unbelievable feeling because in many ways, Dr. King down on this balcony led to America exploding. So for the first time, we saw America officially say there were two Americas. And that is why all of my life I've dealt with the warring between those two Americas. And it all started on this balcony. He was here on behalf of people who pick up other people's trash. This is not a hotel suite at the Peabody downtown. Sure. This is a shared room just off Main Street in Memphis, Tennessee. That says something. It says a lot. He was a Nobel Prize winner. Not only in a little motel room off Main Street, not a suite at the best hotel in town, but in a double room. He didn't even have a single room in the motel. Showed you the kind of man he was. How often do you think about what it would be like today were he still with us, Martin Luther King, the, the elder statesman of the movement? I think about it often, and I, I think about what he would say. I talk to his son a lot about... How do you think your father would counsel us in the next generation? He says, I don't know. I can only go by what he said when he was here, and we've got to try to use that to guide what we do. Room 306 is forever preserved. It now belongs to all of us, and please come here if you haven't seen this already. As we leave you from Memphis tonight, a reminder, it was the 40th anniversary of the Normandy invasion that really got people thinking about our World War II veterans. It inspired Tom Brokaw to write the book that now defines that age, The Greatest Generation. So maybe this 40th anniversary during this election year and with all the work yet to be done in this country will have the same effect on our national conversation on race and in remembrance of the life that was ended on that balcony behind us 40 years ago tonight. That is our broadcast for this Friday evening and for this week. Thank you for being with us. I'm Brian Williams reporting tonight from Memphis, Tennessee. Have a good weekend. Good night. We shall